Okay, so the first thing I want to look at is this back pocket here. It's one of my favorite features of the Fastback. It's super stretchy material, and I love putting food and water here so I don't have to open up the main pack. But, as you can see, this stretchy material isn't as durable as the rest of the pack, and there's been small holes that develop. And all these little areas right here are places where I've done repairs. And basically, I just take a little, uh, couple little stitches and close up the hole. Uh, this, this material is so stretchy you don't usually need to use a patch, except when the hole is really big. And that was the problem I had on the bottom here, where I had a hole that was you know bigger than a half dollar. So I decided to cut out a rectangle from material from another pack, a prototype of this pack actually, and sew a rectangle of that material on top of this stretchy material on the bottom just to reinforce it. This back pocket gets really abused uh, mainly when I'm scrambling, and especially when I'm scrambling down like a slab and I'm crab crawling down, this thing just gets ripped apart. So I'm hoping that this new uh, piece of fabric will stop that from happening and give this uh, pack a little bit more extra, extra life. And once I sewed this on, I actually um, covered it then with some seam grip just to add just a little bit more durability to it. Now let's look at the bottom. So just like the, the pocket here, uh, the bottom of this pack gets abused quite a bit, especially if you're on rocky terrain. So what I did was I just uh, you know, covered this with a, an, another layer of seam grip um, just to stop some of the little abrasions and what looks like the start of uh, tears from actually developing into you know, a, a big tear. So I'm pretty confident that this is going to last for another season or two. Yeah, now let's look at these bungee cords here. These bungee cords here are used to keep things like these trekking poles. Um, on the pack if you stick them into like the side pocket here. Okay, so the way this works is this bungee cord has a hook at the end of it and it's supposed to go into one of these little webbing things and sometimes I have the hardest time getting to actually hold on to so I generally don't mess with that. Instead I usually get a, little, a tiny little carabiner um, this one you can find at like something like Sea to Summit. They're just a couple bucks. And I'll attach that to one of the daisy chained webbing and then just attach the beaner just like that. And that gives you a little bit more space to uh, add stuff in if it's kind of bulky like these trekking poles. And I, get, I just bring two just in case I lose one or I have more, more things to bring. On the odd chance there might be like a stuff sack that I have that I want to have hanging off in the back of my pack. Maybe it's filled with dirty clothes or wet clothes that I want to dry. So that's a really easy modification. One of the bigger modifications I've done for this pack, because I use it for six, seven day trips, are actually added um, kind of legitimate hip straps. Now this pack is designed to ride really high above your back and it's really hard to get these hip straps to actually rest on your iliatic crest. Um, the other problem is, is this pack has no internal frame. So to get the weight that's inside the pack to be transferred to these hip straps is somewhat of a challenge. I'm still kind of tinkering. Current results are somewhat marginal, but they do more than nothing. So I'm kind of happy about that. So let's check it out. So my hip bones stop around here. This is where I want the weight to be distributed onto. And these hip pads rest fairly good um, until I actually strap on my my front straps here. I'm not sure what you call these since there's two and not one. So it looks pretty good. These uh, these hip belts were this hip belt was salvaged from a, a cheap women's pack I found at the sports recyclery for about. 20 bucks and like these this hip strap is only attached to my pack using like four zip ties that I've attached to the webbing that goes straight up and down the pack um, but it's pretty strong the idea is it's not going to work as good as like a actual like backpacking backpack hip straps but it does help me on like day zero of a six day trip or something just try to get some of the weight off shoulders if I'm carrying like six days worth of food. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is uh, actually in the interior of my pack. Um, I have here is a, a square piece of closed cell foam. This is used like as a sit pad and they're super cheap at the store, like 10 to 20 bucks. And what I do is I usually like insert it into that inner pocket used for like a water flask. And what it does is it just adds just a little bit more comfort to my pack when I'm wearing it, especially when the load is heavy and there's things poking into my back. And then it, it serves double duty, it becomes part of my sleep system. Uh, my main sleeping pad is cut down to um, rest on my head to my butt. 
and then I put this below where my feet are, and then my feet get to rest on something that's other than dirt. See, it fits right inside there. That's all, all to it. All right, well, that's basically it. Those are the small modifications I do this pack just to make the pack a little bit more comfortable and functional for the types of stuff that I do. Yeah, leave me a comment if you do any other modifications to your own pack or if you have any questions about mine. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.